All right, we have a quorum now, so I'm just going to get started, and then hopefully Irene and Denise can jump on. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know we scheduled this meeting um, as an extra meeting, so thank you all so much for being able to make it. I'm going to start off with a request for a motion to approve the minutes from September 26th. So moved. And a second? Second. Was there any additions, corrections, or discussion that need to be made for those? Okay, hearing none, let's do a roll call vote. Also, I realized I did not do attendance, so this will also suffice for that. Uh, Courtney, Meyer, Courtney Meyer? Here. And you, what's your vote? Oh, um, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you, sorry, we're double dutying it. Uh, Mary Carney? <laughs> Uh, here and yes. Thank you, Brianna Quinn. Here and yes. And I, Diana West, am also here and I also vote yes. Thank you. The minutes pass. Motion carries. All right. Cyrus is here to talk about 101 East Street, which he has purchased. And we had hoped to um, either find a solution to remodel the existing structure or perhaps um, move it elsewhere. And we heard from Peter Gelinas, the previous owner, that uh, he is considering moving the, the house to an existing property he owns. He's waiting to hear back if it's possible to be able to do that, as I guess he would have to uh, split up a current property that he owns into two different building lots. Um, so, Cyrus, we're wondering like what your timeline is in terms of needing to get the house off the lot. And then I guess we need to determine what our next steps would be. Yeah, um, our timeline is like probably, it's hard to say, to be honest. Like we still don't have financing and um, uh, we, we don't know exactly when we want to build the building. Like I can say like our lease is done 2029. And where we are right now, there's like a really big parking problem. So that's mm. that's definitely why we're moving. For example, and I told the landlord when we were starting that, hey, you don't have enough parking spots. He gave us seven and we started the office with no patients or staff. So I was like, it'll suffice. Now we have 10 staff and seven parking spots. So, um, you know, it, we will definitely be moving at some point. It's just... Like, I would say maybe, like, at the latest, it would be three years before the lease is up. So 2016, uh, 2026 would be when we, when we would, like, absolutely at the very latest, it would have to be gone. Mm -hmm. um, if we could figure out a solution sooner, I think we, seems like we're growing at a, at a rate that... Um, we would um, be interested in, in like getting the project going sooner than later because you just don't know what kind of problems you're going to run into. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd okay. say no sooner than two years from now, but could like at the soonest two years from now, which seems like if for a project this size, like if someone's going to move the house, like that, that's already not a ton of time to to really see like I and I have actually looked into it myself um and I really want to just like add on to it but it's just like that just really like it's uh, all I've received is like this is a non-conforming house and there's no way hmm. um and then it's really expensive to you know and that like when you know it's really expensive to explore alternative ideas mm -hmm. And when people are told like that's that's going to be a no. Um. Okay, so, so right now it sounds like we need to hear more from Peter about what he's waiting on, and then that would inform our next decision on uh, possibly listing the house for auction, and then selling it for a nominal fee of perhaps one dollar, and then it would be on the the. Uh, purchaser to move it off of the property yeah yeah i mean i think that's kind of where it is i would would wouldn't mind 
doing it myself. It's just like, like I looked at some land at the end of East Street, which I thought would be really interesting. It's where that um, farmhouse, the farm stand was. It's actually on Rocky Hill Road at the end okay. of East Street. So the north end, okay. Yes, exactly. So if you cross East, you go to the end of East Street and then right to the left, there's like a, there's like an agricultural farm stand that is zoned for a uh, commercial and residential. And currently there's a commercial unit there. So I actually looked at that with a, like a friend who helps, like who mainly does real estate. It's mm -hmm. currently for sale now, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I went and looked at that. So just to, cause um, really, you know, that seems like a perfect place to move the house to it's a straight shot. So you don't, and it's like less than a mile away. Hmm. So you don't have to go, but then the person who's selling the house or the, the farm stand is, you know, the, unfortunately the farm stand has gone out of business or she was trying to run a business there. She bought the farm stand for 300,000. It's depreciated a lot. I.e. that building there is like falling apart in there like actually falling apart and she's selling it for 370 which is i think a lot like i just you know i can't foresee myself um even getting financing for something that isn't rev like there's unlimited amount of work to go into that farm stand to get it operational in any sort of way so that's the problem is it's like it's not just land so she's asking for a lot more because there's a there's a Pot possible commercial use there mm -hmm. but i you know i would be interested to see if like the town like what's the what are the laws regarding like something that's residential slash agricultural getting the house on that uh, like, as long as it's zoned residential as long as it's zoned commercial if you wanted to have a business out of there i think it's it's fine. You just have to get the right permitting from the town. It's the major issue is if you need to rezone it, then you need a special permit and it might have to go through town meeting ultimately. But yeah. if it's already zoned the right way, then you just have to make sure you get that permit. Yeah. Like, so maybe if we could somehow, if I, I mean, I, I probably could find some sort of like, and I would have I don't I don't know if I would be successful but at least amongst the people I know saying hey guys we have this house there's this land over there um you know like and then answer their questions i.e right now there's the farm stand there and it's zoned agricultural residential that that little land and I think it's like two acres um so what would um could we just put a house there like is that what the commercial is that what agricultural residential means or does like like can it can it have this house there and the farm stand that is currently there would they allow that if they if um, I, knew that, I think that's like something i could really kind of help try to find some partners that might be able to help me do that i'm not an expert on zoning in hadley but the majority of hadley is zoned agricultural residential there's mm -hmm. very few spots in town that are just residential and mainly um they're cul-de-sac neighborhoods up off of um huntington road okay uh so i mean i don't know how it works if there's an existing structure i would think that since the existing structure is first of all, falling apart, and second of all, not built to be a residence that you could at least build a new residence on that property. So I don't see why you wouldn't be able to move an existing structure if you're planning on it being a residence. And then if that, the other structure, if it's just zoned residential agriculture, then the other structure could only serve as an agriculturally related business. And then there's a lot of rules around that. And that it, I think it's like at least 50%, if not more, of what you're selling, you produced yourself on your own farmland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was the 
property I had kind of like it's ten it's ten Rocky Hill Road is the address. So I thought that was like an interesting thing. It's a cute piece of property. We were sad to see it go under when they had a business there the yeah. last few years. So it's I mean it's a good spot and the house on your land is really adorable also. So it seems like it would fit that location. I mean I think that's a good spot. Yeah I would. Um you make a very good point that the shorter the distance you're going to move it, I, I ideally the less money it's going to cost because yeah, fewer roads you have to shut down, possibility of fewer power lines you have to move, exactly all of those kind of factors. And I did actually reach out to Barry Roberts, who has moved a couple of these houses, mm -hmm. um, and he answered. He's a really nice guy. And he, pre I was like, you want this house, Barry? I know you've moved a bunch of houses. And he was like, no, I'm, I really don't. But, you know, I can tell you who helped me move these two houses. So, um, you know, that wasn't, I did try to, that was one area that I was hoping would mm -hmm. be, you know. Um, yeah, so it's on 1.85 acres and she's asking 385 and I've went in it and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't, I don't really see a way more risk in mm -hmm. buying this than anything else because, you know, interest rates are really high and to fix up what's in there, I feel like would be really expensive. Mm -hmm. So Most I was likely that price tag is so high because it's almost two acres of land in Hadley. And just land in Hadley is worth so much. Yes, I agree. But I think like a two acres of land should be like 150 in Hadley. I don't we know. We all wish that. <laughs> Those of us who would like to buy property. Uh, but and, uh, it's just, it's prime farmland. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is a really good location. Although it's like a really busy road, you know. I don't know. Um, Rocky Hill Road gets a lot of traffic, but those are there's a lot of houses right there. Those are all houses. It's definitely, in my opinion, a residential neighborhood with this business. So, anyways, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like where we're at. Um, it's it's uh it's definitely not like we're not starting in the near future. You know, we're just we don't even have the finances to do that. I am trying to get the permitting in place and then the permit is good for ten, two years right so let's say we get permitting like uh like uh Mar around march of next year i don't think we can get it any sooner than that but i think the permit is good so that's march of 2024 permit is good till 2026 we have to start okay which if we start by 2026, will be done around 2028, 2029, which is like, like, you know what I mean? That seems like a natural progression. Mm -hmm. I don't know how fast these things go, but I do know building our dental office in a building that was already built pretty much took a year. So and I'm so different it's now going with to take like house. much longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like we have a little bit of time to do some research about what we need to do to make this happen, because I've never sold a house, and I've also never put up one for auction. So I think we need to determine, like, what kind of professionals we need to bring in. Like, do we need to bring in a real estate agent? Do we need a lawyer? Do we need an auction house? Um, I guess what kind of advertising we would need? Yeah, I don't know. Um I kind of am telling everyone that comes in the office, like, hey, do you guys want a house? Um, just need one person. Uh, I I heard from a patient, like, you know, the newspapers, like um, the one that comes to our houses, uh, the Daily Bulletin, is that what it is? Daily Hampshire Gazette? I, it's like the free one that comes. Like, oh, once I'm week, not sure. The Amherst Bulletin. Oh, okay, yep. Another one. Um, like those can be places um uh social media maybe mm -hmm. we don't really advertise much as a dental office it's like all word of mouth so i mean i i think an auction 
wouldn't be a bad idea because then there would be a chance that you also wouldn't have to sell it for a dollar. You might be able to actually make a profit on it if people were interested in buying the house because it's a decent sized house. I mean, it's what it's it over 2000 square feet. Yeah. It's a four, it's a five and a half bed and it's, and it's been re-renovated. Like people have put obviously work into it. So it's, it's especially cool. with the rental market around here, I feel like, yeah. you know, they, we were just, um, Courtney and I were talking about this earlier. People last year moved a house, um, right on North Maple, they moved a house that has now become a college rental. And I don't know where that one came from, but they spent a lot of money to move the house and then rent it out. So it seems like there is a market for that. Um, so I would be surprised if we put it up for auction where you put it up for auction and there wasn't somebody who wanted to purchase it. That would surprise me. Yeah. To, um, kind of add to that so i did ask barry roberts like how much the whole thing would cost and he says it's just around two hundred thousand dollars but to to buy a house like that is um i think like i don't know i mean it's renting for four thousand to five thousand a month so there's definitely yeah, like investment potential it's there. It's so expensive right now that I feel like the rental market is is prime. So if there was someone who had multiple lots, like you were talking about on their property, and they did have the opportunity to put a second house or third house on a lot, it seems like it would make a lot of sense. Um, so I feel like Diana is correct in thinking that we should figure out who to bring in, who could put the house up for auction. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems like the right move to see if there mm -hmm. is interest in purchasing the house yeah especially if you're starting at one dollar that's a good starting point for people yeah and i mean want to purchase a home we're okay to have the house like we really don't we don't want to we're not the kind of people that want to like always just get top dollar for everything so um you know it's we're easy going we you know we don't we don't and honestly, as my personality, it's like, if it can be used for something else for good, then that's better than like throwing it away. It's like recycling it. Um, so I do think that's a good idea. And I think if it's like with our time frame, if we get it up, get it however we can market that this is something that, you know, so that we have a chance. So there's no pressure mm -hmm. to, um, you know, because I don't think these things happen in like three to six months. I think they take a little longer to find someone and then actually coordinate how to move it. Or And so and, and just so I can um, kind of touch, because I did have a conversation with Peter about it. Um, the concerns, I think Peter knows more about it than me, is number one, is the house even movable? Mm, okay. like, is the structure, like, can it sustain a move? So they have to look at that. Um, and then number number two, Peter was saying he has two really good properties. I think one is at the, is it the common school that's right there? Or there's a school right near the house. And he owns another piece of property at the end of East Street on the, I think to the, to the South. And he was saying um, that the kind of like, obstacle is getting the town to subdivide his parcel like if they can uh, and then th that's a that that's something that i don't he was kind of hoping and or saying you know maybe um with the help of the historical commission we can actually get the town to allow a subdivision to try and preserve this house mm -hmm. so that's kind of where i think it's more feasible for peter because when i just look at my finances like there's no way i can buy that land for 300 and right now I just looked up it's 385,000 which I think is a lot yeah I know Peter has a lot of um resources that he could put into this so I think our plan right now is to wait and see what Peter learns about his parcels and um hopefully we can get in front of, um, I think it would be the planning board if we need to, to make a case. Um, because if he's willing to move it, then that saves us all a lot of trouble if he can't yes. move it. 
Um, yeah. And then depending on the outcome of that, we start looking into what our next steps have to be. And I think overall, our goal should probably be to get this moving as quickly as we can to um, sort of be done with this process, I think, within a year. So we don't hold you up and you can continue to do what you need to do. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good plan. I, I will also say, you know, I think this is going to be so that the town is already aware of it because Bill Dwyer is Peter's lawyer. So okay. he's the one who was Peter's attorney throughout the transaction. He's also the he's I think he's the planning board um, director. Yep. Chairperson. Yep. Chair, chairperson. Exactly. And so he's aware of this because going into it, that's what we said we were doing. Um, and we had, he had been, he, I think he was the chairperson previously too, when we, um, when we started our dental office in the current space, which we needed permits for. And now our architect, who is a local architect, his name is Larry Tuttle is they're just doing the very preliminary, um, surveying and like stormwater type stuff to see what kind of land, like uh, geotechnical stuff there is and what is actually feasible. And they are, they are planning on like pro- kind of letting, I think attending one of the planning board meetings, maybe the, let's say in the fall or the winter to kind of be like, this is what we're looking on doing just to put this on your guys' radar, like officially. Okay. So I think it's gonna be put on their radar, let's say by the end of 2023 through a planning board meeting. So it might be beneficial for um, if, if the historical commission had representation there. <laughs> Great. That's my daughter. <laughs> Can you say hi? Hi, hi welcome. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think we have a, a plan and um, it hinges on what we learned from Peter and then we can move yeah. forward after that. Yeah, and I think it's, I would, you know, Peter's a really easygoing guy. That's what I've learned. He's a good guy. So um, I think maybe just gently reminding him mm-hmm. in a month is like my plan if I don't hear anything. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we can find a satisfactory conclusion to all of this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm still in the camp if we could like present to the town with the with our architect there like hey like is there any exceptions that can be made like can we have any like uh um you know commitment mm-hmm. to an exception so we can start to invest in the plan that in- just includes the house where it is um seems to make sense to me but i guess didn't make sense to the professionals <laughs> It does leave the property, the house, by the way. It goes on to state property. Oh, because of how Route 9 goes? Yeah, like it actually goes into Route 9 now. And they've just a little bit widened Route 9. And yeah, yeah, I think they took a little bit of the ha- like the land and then so and then um, but it looks nice. Like they put the sidewalks. They, they just put the sidewalks today, I think. It looks good. Isn't and- it that like several feet of one corner go over the zoning line, like the new zoning line. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then the the bigger problem is that the entire building lies within the 50 foot setback from route nine, but the, that's exactly, you're right. That little corner of the old barn goes into state property now. So, um, Okay. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully we can work it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hopeful. I think they're, you know, kind of makes sense, but we'll see. Hopefully P- Peter gets back to us. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Okay, next up on the agenda is to prep for town meeting. Is anyone able to attend town meeting? I'm this Thursday, correct? Yes. You're going, Possibly. Courtney? 
possibly <laughs> unclear. Denise, are you going to town meeting? Yes, I'm going to town meeting. Great. <laughs> okay. So our one thing on the town meeting warrant is to support the CPA funding for St. John's Church, also known as V1 Vodka now. And I looked up the warrant and it's Article 8, so it's right in the middle of the meeting. And um, it includes stipulations that it has to be approved by the select board and that a preservation restriction has to go on the property. So I think those are both good points to reiterate if somebody gets up and is mad that we're using public funds for a privately owned business. Um, I can send around these talking points as well. Another thing to point out to make our case is that the building sat empty for years and then um, Paul goes up, purchased the property and um, repurposed it. I mean, he could have proposed to demolish it. He could have done a number of things with it. Instead, he wants to actually save the property and restore it. As we put in our letter, it was the first Catholic church in Hadley, which represents a chain, the changing cultural landscape of the town, which is closer to what our cultural landscape looks like today. Uh, when the church was in use, that's still very much within living memory. The building is still important to many residents of the town. Community preservation funds exist to help with historic preservation, which is very expensive, and there are not a lot of other avenues that private owners can take. The money already exists. We're not asking to raise taxes. This money is already in an account and uh, Paul went through the right avenues to apply for it and the Community Preservation Act Committee decided to award it to him. And that is the purpose of the committee is to make those expert decisions. And lastly, it's that it's been a historic district listed on the National Register of Historic Places. I was going to say too, um, another point we might be able to make is the fact that they're currently redoing the face of town hall and they put a lot of that money into the Goodwin building. And like, this is directly next door. So it's like within that little area that they've already put so much money into and are trying to restore the faces of. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense to continue that trend of putting money into those buildings. Cause they're right within the, you know, prime center of the town historic district. And just to um, clarify, we decided to not support the interior work, correct? But the exterior work and the steeple with the CPA fund? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason I thought we should brainstorm for this is because there was, I heard some grumblings via my dad, some people he hangs out with. However, these people don't typically attend town meetings, so I don't know how widespread these grumblings are, but I thought we should be ready. I've learned that if I over-prepare, then I don't need to use my preparation. I heard uh, Jane Nevin Smith is against it. Okay. That's rumor, but... Well, I the wonder... town voted down money for to save the steeple of the first church, so the town's not super into the steeples i guess <laughs> no no we voted in favor for the steeple first church um they just lost at town meeting no first was the clock and then second was the steeple and they both passed oh good um there has been a hold on the steeple work because it's very hard to find a steeple jack that's not a career mm -hmm. many people have yeah. um and unfortunately the steeple jack that was found did not have a a license to work in Massachusetts. Oh. So Bummer. that's on hold, but hopefully it's coming along. <laughs> Good. Um, so is anyone willing to get up and speak in favor of this? And I, I said, I can share my talking points with you. I see Courtney over there. <laughs> Go ahead. I, thought, I thought that I was assigned this task. I was just checking in, Denise, great. No, that's great. And if you have notes, then like, yes, I will take them because I haven't written my stuff yet. I will formalize my. Thank you, Denise. The other day. 
Yes, that would be awesome because I I can't say yes or no because kids and I don't know if I'll be able to make it based on scheduling stuff that day. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping I can make it to town meeting, but I just not 100%. It's not a super long warrant, so hopefully you'll all get out in an acceptable amount of time. Because I don't want to scare you, but I've definitely been there until 11 o'clock before. I thought that hasn't happened in a long time, though. Okay, what's a long time? <laughs> what? What is a long time? Because, I mean, it's happened within our lifetimes of being able to vote. Yeah, yeah, but it hasn't happened since they, like, started to put all of the, like, first, like, 12 things lumped okay. together. Okay, good. All right. Excellent. So, hopefully, this will just zip right through everything. So I think um, I think Jane um, voted no because it's a private property and not town property. So um, I have a feeling that there are going to be people who will not be in support of it because it's a business and the business should they think that the business should be putting the money in instead of taking it from CPA. Yep. I mean, I totally understand the argument that we have which is that if then they can't make the repairs and the building falls into disrepair and then he vacates the building or tries to sell it then that whole church could end up being demolished or someone could move in and you know not make repairs and it would just sit there falling down or whatever we have no way of knowing what would happen afterwards so the fact that there is a viable tenant who has a successful business who wants to keep it historically accurate seems like it makes a lot of sense in this situation, especially because of the location. I feel like the location, if it were elsewhere, I would maybe understand more, but it's directly next to the other main town buildings. So it seems like it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Also, like, there's not much else you can do with that site. Like, if you were to demolish the building, technically, I don't think that lot is within the zoning laws be big enough to be a building lot so there aren't a lot of other opportunities or choices for that property okay i'll put something more formally together that aren't just my ramblings here so take into consideration what you guys said too uh any more thoughts on this topic um diana don't don't kill yourself on making it formal because i'll just I'll write something up that I'm going to read so you can just send me your ramblings. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. CPA application projects updates. So the sign designs are complete. The designer is being paid by the town. Um, I started to look into how to apply for the permit and it was not clear on the website which category we fall into. So I need to reach out to them to find out more. Uh, the walking tour, I did actually hear back from Margaret Atwood's assistant's assistant. <laughs> she told me I had to reach out to Houghton Mifflin for permission. Um, so I started to fill out the form and then I realized I didn't have half the information I needed. So I've ordered the book from the library so I can just copy everything out of the copyright page. And I got a notification that it is in the library. I just forgot to pick it up. So hopefully we can move forward with that and then back from them soon any questions about either of those two projects so you said um just for the for the minutes you heard back from her assistant's assistant Correct. is that what you said yeah <laughs> um and then they directed you to who Houghton or h-o-u-t-o-n h-o-u oh, okay h-o-n mifflin okay got it thank you and they actually have a form right on their website you fill out and submit. But they were asking questions that I was just like, I, I can't find these online. So I just need to order the actual book and copy it. Okay. Thank you. I never, and I never heard back from Holly Hobby's people. Okay. We tried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? Courtney, did you want to go over our meeting from earlier? 
what we had discussed. Yes, yeah, so Irene, Brianna and I met earlier today to start talking about the um, potential bylaw for demolition delay. Um, so we have some ideas on that and we can uh, put a more formalized proposal together uh, to present to all of you at the next meeting, if that works. Perfect. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that we should say at this point. I guess we our one question was that we were thinking to present it perhaps to the um, bylaw committee and were we thinking also maybe the planning board to see what they had thought if or were we going to just talk to people on the planning board about um I don't know we had, we had talked about many different avenues of like how to run this by certain boards and committees um prior to town meeting to just kind of get a feel for what people were feeling about the demolition delay bylaw and how we would go about that and like what would be the most palatable way to present it so it doesn't seem overly complicated um mm -hmm. but yeah I think our meeting was was good and we have a good idea about what to do for our next meeting I think it makes sense to meet with the planning board to get their feedback uh to under better understand the administrative aspect of it like who would be would that be on us to make those decisions would it be in conjunction with the planning board uh, and then either we meet with the bylaws committee or we hold a, a public forum just to get feedback and maybe answer some questions and just try to see how the town feels. Um, because I'm not, I'm not really sure what the overall purpose of the bylaw committee is. Is it that they come up with new bylaws? Is, is that we submit bylaws to them? Do they, that was a um, question we had earlier. <laughs> we, we weren't really sure how they worked and what the situation was there and how to approach that with this. And I'm wondering, like, do they report directly to the select board? Um, I wonder if this on the town website for us. So I, um, I know that Tim Nyhart is on the bylaw committee, so I sent him an email um, for us to have a conversation. Um, so uh, I can ask these questions for sure. Great. Awesome. Yeah, it's not listed under boards and committees. No, yes, it's not. We have this, we have this problem <laughs> earlier. <laughs> okay. Trying to figure yeah. out. Um, I just I googled, I think it was like Hadley Town bylaw committee, and then there was like an older um document on the website that was sort of buried that had the list of all the members. Occasionally it comes up they have a meeting because it's on the calendar. Oh yeah, they have one on the 17th. Oh. Um, and the next one is, I think it said November 20th, which I'm not around for, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, that's right before Thanksgiving. That's a tough time. Yeah. Yeah, so we figured we would put together a more streamlined proposal um, because what we found from researching the bylaws in other towns in the state, um, Courtney got some really good responses from um, several other historical commissions around the state and what they had done. But there are different time lengths to the bylaw. Um, that's really the main thing that changes. And then there are three types of bylaws for this. One is um, based on age of the building. One is based on um, a type, like a category of building, and one is based on um, just a list of properties, which the historical commission has to maintain. So we, mm -hmm. I think as a whole, we went through the pros and cons of each type of bylaw. And we realized, I think that age was probably going to be the most beneficial and less or least mm, offensive to people in the town, because it, it wouldn't be like very specific properties it would kind of give like a more overall comprehensive time that would encompass most of the buildings that matter but also leave out buildings maybe that don't matter as much um so that was kind of what we came up with and so we want to write a proposal based on that and present it at the next meeting great well thank you so much for your work on this um i'm excited to hear more and um there's no tight timeline on this, so we can definitely take our time in making sure that um, we talk to everybody we need to talk to and 
hopefully get some public support. Perfect. Okay, anything else? All right, well, thank you guys so much for meeting kind of last minute. Uh, our next meeting date is November 28th. We'll keep that. Uh, we won't meet in December because that's just too crazy of a time and then we can reconvene in January. Uh, but I'll definitely put the demolition delay bylaw on our agenda for November 28th. Um, best of luck with town meeting on Thursday. If you guys need to call or text me, feel free to do that. We need some ideas. <laughs> I don't think you can hold me up to the microphone, but <laughs> maybe you can just like have a Bluetooth thing in your ear and I can talk to you. <laughs> All right. Well, if that's everything, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. thanks. Have a good night, Bye. everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.